Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video for you to address a very common question that I get from roughly anybody in the world that I meet, finds out what I uh, do for a hobby, and they say, Nick, why the heck are you into pocket knives? It's a fair question, and I'm going to address this using a bunch of videos, each one talking about some element of why I find the pocket knife art form to be a particularly interesting one, why I find these tools to be more interesting than a whole lot of other things out there in the world. So, um, And I want to share some of that joy, share some of my feelings, and show people why I think these things are really cool. Right, um, and today's topic is the folks who are using pocket knives as a canvas for their art. Now, to be clear, right, the industrial design is an art all of its own, and making a really good functional piece is absolutely amazing, right? There, there, there is a lot of joy in that 100%. And there are people who turn their designs into an art form of themselves. There are art knives out there in the world. That's that's absolutely a thing. But um, today I want to focus on the people who take what could have otherwise been a very vanilla knife and um, add a little bit of an artistic touch to it, right? A nice example of this is this little guy right here. This is the Chris Reeve Knives Sebenza. Um, and this is the small Sebenza, the Model 31. And in practice, for most of the knives that they produce, they end up looking a lot more like this side of the knife, right? The blasted titanium scale, etc. But then they got a little fancy with it, right? This is their night sky pattern. And what they've done here is they've used some variety or another of technology, probably some kind of a mill, uh, or perhaps even just a grinder of some variety, like a Dremel or something like that. And they have added in a pattern. This pattern, by the way, is not just uh, painted on or something like that. No, this is scratched into the titanium. Similarly, they've drilled in little stars and things like that. They've added in these little trees, even put in a little shooting star right here. But nonetheless, what we see here is um, art. This is something that somebody has done by hand and made a really cool little scene out of it, right? They've added in a little pearly-looking deal to the hole that's already present in the knife. It's a really cool little idea. This has absolutely nothing to do with the function of the knife. This knife is not meaningfully any different because of this, right? The design of the knife is fundamentally the same, but they've gone the extra mile, and they've turned this knife that could have otherwise been pretty vanilla into something that looks really interesting and a little bit fancier, a little bit more artistic. Uh, another example of this that's maybe a, a kind of a different approach, but really not that different, is this little guy right here. This is the Northern Knives, uh, well, I'm sorry, the Benchmade Knife Company bug out at its core, but this is a version that is heavily customized by a, a store called Northern Knives and an artist named Paul Monko, or uh, Colorful Filth. This knife started off its life looking something like this right here. This is the Benchmade bug out sort of vanilla version with a plastic handle, right? With a, you know, a, they, there were a lot of similarities here, but they've done a couple of things a little bit different with this guy. To start with, they coated large parts of it black, but they didn't just coat it black. In fact, they coated it black and then added in purple spatter to create a starscape as well as uh, looks like maybe even lasering off or just painting on there. I'm not 100% sure. Other stars here. So we end up with a star scene where we would have otherwise had a tactical black blade, right? But then back here, back here the canvas thing really starts up because what we see here is that they have taken this, uh, this titanium handle. They installed a separate titanium scale onto both sides of this knife and they have anodized it. That is, they, they've used an electrochemical process to change the color of the titanium in a permanent way um, and they have done it in such a way that you end up with what is actually art here, with a little planet, a little astronaut, etc. This is uncontroversially, I would say, uh, an object of art. Whether you like the art or not is sort of separate, but this is somebody's canvas, right? If we turn it over, we see a very similar sort of thing. Under the pocket clip here, we see a little spaceman dude, and he's shooting his ray gun at a octopus of some variety or another. I'm not 100% sure what this beastie here is, but he's a thing, right? This is absolutely a case of somebody taking a knife that would have otherwise been, well, a Benchmade bug out, which is a fine little tool, but they've created something out of it that is an artistic statement, that is a, a way to show, well, art to be fair. And that's that's really cool. And so this is a, a computerized art. All of this, I imagine, is probably being done by a laser, although they may, maybe they've got other approaches here. Whereas this is handmade, this is all computer done, and this is much more graphic design. This is not printed on here, it's not painted on there, but it, it it's done so in a, a very similar way, right? So this is sort of a very different approach, but it is sort of a, a, it still makes sense. Then finally, we've got this little guy. This is the Protect Knives Sprint Ultimate Custom Edition. Um, 
This is a really neat knife. Um, and, you know, at its core, it's a little Protec automatic knife, right? Um, at its core, it's just a, a tiny little pocket knife. But it's been done a little bit differently than most. And the biggest thing that's happened to this guy, aside from a slight upgrade in materials to a titanium and whatnot, and a nice uh, Damascus-style steel blade here, what we see here is a um, little bit of engraving. And this engraving is not just any engraving. It's been done by a gentleman named Bruce Shaw, who is one of the very best engravers out there working, at least in the pocket knife game. There were certainly lots of great engravers out there in the world, not throwing shade. But what we see is that every little piece of this guy has been gone over and engraved where possible. We see actual hand engraving done by actual hands done on all of the surfaces. And this is a uniquely artistic endeavor, right? There is no functional value to this engraving. I mean, adds friction, traction, but I don't think anyone's really using that. If you wanted traction, you wouldn't put a big old thing of mother of pearl over here, right? But what we have here is somebody has put a lot of time and a lot of effort into making this knife beautiful using a very classic technique, using art. And it's uh, art to the extent that it is signed by the artist. We see the artist's signature right there. And so this is another case in which a knife that could have otherwise been a production knife, right? And it is a production knife. I want to be very clear about that. The, these particular, the Protec Sprint is made by the uh, hundreds um, by Protec. But at the same time, because it's been given to an artist, and it's been used as a canvas, it becomes something a little bit different. This is a tool that one can carry. It's a tool that one can carry to cut things with. It's a tool that one can carry to, I don't know, open boxes and envelopes and the kinds of things you do with a pocket knife on a regular basis. But it's also a piece of art, and it shows basically the skill of a, of a true human artisan, right? An engraving is not a small thing, right? That's an amazing skill. It's many, many years of experience, or in this case, this takes the art of an actual, you know, graphic designer or artist and puts it onto a piece at a price that is much more attainable, by the way, than this guy, which is going to be running in your twelve, thirteen hundred dollar range. This guy, which is going to be running in your six hundred dollar range, or this guy, which is only going to be running around three hundred. But because they're doing it only, by the way, pocket knives get expensive when you start putting the artists involved, right? But nonetheless, you end up with something that is a functional tool, but that is also a canvas for art. And of course, there are going to be pieces of art that really jive with you. There are going to be pieces that you're like, hmm. Good skill, but no, I'm good, thanks. But nonetheless, that's one of the many reasons I love pocket knives, is because they can be a wonderful canvas for actual art to happen in a way that you can carry with you on a regular basis, and something that can bring you a little bit of joy every time you go to open a box, every time you go to shop in a pencil, every time you go to take out a tool that you're going to use on a regular basis. So there you go. I hope this part was interesting to you. Like I said, I'm going to be trying to do a couple more of these guys. But there is so much joy in this, and the autistic factor is just one of a very small number of, or I'm sorry, very large number of reasons that I freaking love pocket knives, and I think you might as well if you get into it a little bit. Have a good one. Bye now.